Well, welcome back, all you saints and sinners, to Working Girl, the podcast. I am Ginger, the, or the, is it the or the? The The. Minge. No, I'm going to be the. That sounds official. Ginger, the Minge. And And I'm I'm Trinity, the Tuck. The Tuck, because she's not fancy. No. (laughs) <laughs> Here's one chance, fancy. Don't let me down. Too late. You have set a goal and already failed. <laughs> what? I've, I have failed many goals in my life. Well, but at least you won all stars. I mean, I failed at that too, bitch. I'm a, there was the tie. <laughs> I didn't even get the whole thing myself, bitch. Oh, that's fine. Oh. Who cares? At least you won. You got the jewelry, yeah. you got the check. Fine. By now, um, we, we give us a couple of different uh, versions because uh, uh, by now we will have known if you had won or not. So um, <laughs> congratulations to you for winning All Stars. Hey, you know what? Third time is the charm. I'm very yeah. excited. I'm happy that I don't have to like in five years go back again and do it all over because I don't think I've got another one in me. OK, so let's do another one where you lost. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry that you lost. <laughs> all star. Oh, bitch. Three strikes and you are out. That is <laughs> it. I guess I'm just going to wait by my phone for five more years and see if mother calls me home again. Uh, mm. I don't know. It's whatever. Would you do it again? Huh? Would you do it again? Would I do it again? Um, Not at this moment, but uh, talk to me in five years. See what happens. See what hey. works. Mm. That's what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> But but somebody, I wanna, yes, huh? somebody who we all want to do it again because they are sickening, fierce, and everything in between. I, I'm still working on the tongue. Yes. Part. Mm-hmm. Um, let's welcome to our podcast to working girls, uh, a working gentleman, and sometimes a working girl, depending <laughs> on uh, the 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 lighting and makeup and wigs and oh my. Um, welcome, Got Mick. Hi, hi, Gorge. That's the quite the intro. <laughs> America's leading Eminem impersonator, right here, baby. I love this fantasy. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I was feeling it. Trying to put Paris salt in a way and Eminem from now on. Yeah, well, you know, Eminem. No less work for sure. And do you <laughs> melt in the mouth, the hand, or both? <laughs> both, baby. Oh, good. <laughs> Our you listeners know, I, are dying to know. I saw where you had did um, the, I, I guess it was advertisement for Paris's new show on Netflix. And I didn't even know she did a cooking show until you had did the advertisement. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, I need to binge watch this. And so <laughs> um, I binge watched the whole thing. It is so good. Perfect. Well, I'm so glad I was able to introduce that to you. <laughs> They'll just give anybody a cooking show these days. <laughs> also, please go watch Wigs in a Blanket, now streaming on OutTV and FruitTV.uk, starring Jiggly Caliente and myself. Shameless plug. You didn't, you didn't have me advertise it, so that's why. Well, th- that's why we've invited you today. <laughs> yeah. okay, part advertisement, part intervention. Oh, uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so what oh, are you up to? What's life? Oh my God, life is just insanely busy right now. I was just talking to you guys before we started recording, but I've been procrastinating as much as possible because when I get one day off, it's like, I don't want to put a wig on. So so it's like procrastinating life, but just so busy. And I have this weird mentality where like everything will just be fine. So I try to pack as much like (laughs) possible into one day as possible. And then I ended up moving because I thought that was easy. (laughs) I, I, yeah, it's just like doing the most at all times. Well, now that you're a superstar celebrity, you should be able just to post, hey, I'm moving. Can somebody please come and carry literally everything into my new house? Yeah, totally. And I just post my address. Yeah. I mean, it, what yeah, could go wrong? Why not? <laughs> why not? I mean, we've all been doing it on Grinder for years to strangers. <laughs> Very true. Mm, I was more of a growler girl. Just let yourself in. Yeah. <laughs> Doors open, baby. <laughs> Face down, ass up. <laughs> Light Speaking off. of grinder, are you dating anyone? I'm actually not dating anyone right now. I'm definitely in a, a hoe phase of my life, which I'm living for. 
Cause I like what? turned it off like a thousand percent for a while. And now I'm just like getting back into it and I'm living. I mean, what is God like, type? Oh my God. Well, I'm pansexual. So I definitely like grinder. It's just like a little hard for me unless I'm super drunk. Cause I love to like <laughs> meet the person and I like to know their personality first, but I love, I love just like artists and funny people. Yeah. Just, okay. Funny artist. Okay. So basically, you're hitting on me right now, and I'm flattered, but I'm married. Well, <laughs> it's a little far away right now. <laughs> <laughs> Our love will suffice to the Brady Bunch screen right now. Yeah. Get your husband. Husband. Envisioning your type being like total stoner, um, musician, probably haven't hasn't showered in a day. Um, could, could that could be kind of you know I, I mean i feel like that's everyone's type mo- for the most part but i just need i need someone who also has their own life so we like mm. are just both doing the most at the same time and then like we come back together and he's like babe i haven't seen you in so long here's a birkin because i feel so bad <laughs> yes oh my gosh i thought that's what i wanted so i married this man who when i told him i was on drag race he's like would you you rate like race cars and that kind of stuff literally so butch you could just cry and (laughs) now like flash forward five years almost six years later he's the one rolling in the suitcases and telling me oh girl that lip does not go with that shoe don't do it always goes down i always (laughs) yeah like my mom even doesn't even know anything about drag but she's like i don't know about that hair i'm like what (laughs) Like, yes. Yeah. Good old Amy. Oh, Amy. And that's her name, Amy. Amy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's such a great mom name. My it, my birth mother's name is April, so it's very the same. Like very that. Oh, and Amy oh. added again. <laughs> my mom, a good old Southern woman, Shirley Ann. Oh, Shirley. My, that's yeah. you. That's your. I'm. That's your drag name. And her sister, my aunt, is Glenda Faye. Oh my God. You know, do y'all want to know what the cut most country old school names? My great grandparents on my mom's side, uh, my grand my great grandfather's name was Willard. <laughs> and my great grandmother's name was Wilma. I love Willard it. and Wilma. Willard and Wilma. And we called them Ma and Pa. Oh my God. Well, I look like my grandparents would be uh, Fred and Wilma, honestly. <laughs> I mean, giving a little Flintstone realness. Uh, no, my grandfather was Roy Mack. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And my Roy grandfather, Mack? Roy Mack. And my uh, my grandmother was Shirley Temple. Not the real one. Wow. Named after. No, you're kidding. No, no. Why what would I talk about That's like Rosé. Rosé's name is Ross Matthews. Like her is it really? I swear to God. Yes. <laughs> That's what his name is. So weird. I love oh that. <laughs> what are your grandparents' names? Um, Dan and Diane. Dan and Diane. Oh my god. Here's a little story about Dan and Diane. <laughs> <laughs> we all our grandparents have like full sitcom names. I love that though. I love that. Yeah. I love that. It reads well in our memoirs. It really does. <laughs> because you hear a name like Roy Mack or or Dan and Diane, and you know exactly who these people are, what they look like, where they're from, and the fact that they're not wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gomic, you, you were phenomenal on season 13. I remember meeting you years before you were on Drag Race um, at a shoot for like a a commercial for prep or something that we were doing you were like you were like the makeup artist on set or something what wasn't it something like that i feel like i do remember that is that where we met yeah i think that's where we met i mean you weren't in drag but you were you yeah. out of drag and i met you and you were so nice and you were so like um exactly how you are like total like surfer airhead kind of like gorgeous and I, 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 I just fell in love with you then I was like this person is so cool and um you were so good at makeup and then you I hadn't seen your drag at that time it wasn't until someone at the shoot said oh they do phenomenal drag 
And so after the shoot, I looked you up and I was like blown away at, at your artistry. You're just so good at what you do. You are. You are incredible. And I would say the first time I met you, you were not boisterous in the personality that we know. You were you seemed scared shitless. Because it was you and Matthew Anderson. Yeah. You were working with him, like, like I'm, I'm assuming, like, interning with him for yeah. the makeup and hair for my, uh, the cover shoot for my first album yes. years ago. This was right after season seven. Yeah. Oh, my and God. I just, the only thing I remember from that, I remember two things. One, being butt-ass naked in that hallway of that office building in downtown LA. And Matthew Anderson pretending to touch up my hair just to cover me from all of the people that were at this office party. No, there was this office party going on where people were crossing from one end of the building to the other in this hallway where I was butt-ass booty naked. Yes. Doing this it's like the shoot. craziest red hair ever. That was like bigger than you. It was like orange fire stuff that Matthew had pulled out of the trunk of his car, a ratted mess, and he went, Ch -ch -ch, and it was perfect. But the other thing that I remember is Matthew continuously yelling at you about keeping a crisp line on the lip. Yes. Matthew was literally like full on just like, yell at me just yell at me which I love and I feel like it's responsible for my personality now because I'm the exact <laughs> same way now but yeah that was like one of the first times I was ever working with Matthew and I was just like so scared I obviously do Anderson I was you know? scared we're all we were all very scared and like he was yelling at people on set like he was just going off that day it was like I don't know what was in her soul that day but she was going off and it I mean it turned out fucking gorge I loved that day so much and I love Matthew so much so, so that was like everything to me it was it, it meant so much to me too because I've never felt more hip and young and youthful and gorgeous than then you two made me feel that day and then I, I hired you to do my makeup for the Dumplin premiere a couple years after that. Oh, yes. And that's when you had, like, fully started to come into the personality. And that day was a kiki. It was so fun. I know. Oh, my God. You both have all... We've known each other for a long time. All of us, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like, totally, like, pre-transition me. Like, both of you have, like, seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that could be... That could be the same for all of us because I feel like we've all gone through this big metamorphosis over the last half of a decade that we've known each other. Oh yeah. I think you look kind of the same. Like you you had red hair then. Um like a like reddish, I think it was red. Um, but it was short. But yeah, you looked kind of the same. I mean, you know, your body a little bit was different, but <laughs> you were still you were still handsome back then. Oh my god. Stop that. Thanks. Stop. But yeah, no, that's definitely, we've all definitely been through a journey since those times. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a couple of nose jobs. So I think I probably have changed the most physically. I um, mean, I definitely <laughs> lost like 10 pounds in the chest region too since then. Oh, you, yeah, those were, those were kind of big. They I, used to I, be I, big. I've gained it. Yeah, I mean, I could have just donated mine. Suck, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I'll let it pass. Yeah. Um, if anything comes out, like my internet or something, uh, girl, there's like a fucking hurricane that's happening right now that just appeared out of nowhere. This is Florida, obviously. Um, so I apologize. <laughs> um, just finish the podcast without me. It goes all perfect. It'll be Sorry, fine. We'll, we're moving on. We'll snip it. So um, speaking of journeys and all of these things that have happened to us, like a as the years have gone on, it's been fun to sit back and watch each other like succeed. And who would have thought the, that you would have made such waves on season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race? I mean, those of us who know you know that you have the talent in you, but to see you go on and not only conquer just being gorgeous and, and, and turning the looks, but also being funny and being a yeah. great actress. Oh my God, stop. No, thanks. I definitely was shocked, um, as you may have seen as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always just thought I was like funny talking but that's obviously you guys know very well that that's not being a comedian like I had no yeah. idea to actually sit down and write a joke 
And so it was so scared going into it. And I remember on the first day of the interviews, they were like, what challenges do you not want to do? And I was like, I don't want to roast and I don't want to do snatch game. Like everything I was good at, I didn't want to do. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know where I was going with that theory. Like, what did I think I was good at? I don't know, but yeah. It's but definitely- it's one of those things, like to be a working girl, you've got to be able to take things you're not comfortable with and turn them into a positive. And I think that that sometimes we succeed most in life whenever something scares us so shitless that we're like, okay, I'm just going to use that energy to get over it. Yeah. By the time that roast came around, I was like so excited, like not even like nervous. I was just like, this is what I love to do now. So weirdly, it's like a short amount of time there, but also like felt like the longest time ever because I was just changed so much with what I love to do and what I was good at, I guess. So it was, it's definitely crazy to look back on. (laughs) People don't understand that it's such a bubble when you're there that some days it feels like you've been there for seven weeks. Some days it feels like you've been there for seven years. Yes, bitch. And it was the pandemic when we were there too. So we had to like quarantine for, oh Oh, yeah. And so it was, we had to quarantine for two, a week, 10 days or whatever without phones in a hotel room. Oh my gosh. And then film. So we were like two months just in a hotel, like not allowed to leave no phone or anything. Mm -hmm. I know that feeling. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Looking back, I'm glad I didn't have a phone because it kind of just dialed me in. It makes you focus. It was so good. I remember seeing your finale look and being like, how the fuck is that even made? Like it, it like you were like just gliding. You looked like a, an illustration, but in person, it was so, so good. Okay. To me, probably the best look that's ever been on Drag Race. Yes, I love that. Get Violet Trotsky on the phone. We <laughs> fight about it all the time. <laughs> She's got me yeah, blocked, it's fine. I definitely think it, it it surpassed her 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 give up look, and her her give up look was amazing. But I think it the construction of it, the 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 way you looked in it, it just it was just so phenomenal. Who made that again? Uh, Diego Montoya. Um, yeah, oh. he he like killed it. And I was so serious about. I wanted to be like a spooky regal queen, and I wanted like this crazy silhouette. So we were playing with so many different things. And I actually like flew to New York just for fittings and stuff. Cause I was just so serious about this ball <laughs> of the finale. I was so, I was psycho about it. Bitch, I shaved my head. I was like in it. I'm what? sure you sold your soul for that. Cause it looks like it was really, really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was my most expensive look from the show, but it, um, I'm pretty good at, I mean, my connections and finding ways to cheat corners. So people think I spent way more than I did, which I'll just let them think that, whatever. But and people usually look at my runways and think I spent a lot less than I did. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we're, well, we're like yeah, opposite like- ends of the coin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dumb. Well, I feel like um, uh, Goldilocks, because you're like, you you didn't spend a lot and you spent too much and I spent just right, I guess. <laughs> I know. The fans apparently know. I feel like they just need to create the budget because I can't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the always the really fun thing dealing with fans and their theories is that they, in their mind, come up with exactly how much we spent, what our inspiration <laughs> was, the, 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 the hurdles that we leapt through in order to achieve these things. And while some of them are very fun to read, most of them are very not true. <laughs> Never. I'm like, okay, there's like full theories that are like, got mixed, spent hundreds of thousands of, I'm like, why would I have done that? Like literally get a grip, no. Not only why, how? How, yeah, exactly. They think I am just the richest human alive, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> you rich got sugar down on the world waiting. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to get to the finale because the, the the whole concept of the ball was so intriguing. I thought it was so cool. But before we get there, of course, we've got to start at the beginning. How was it to be cast as the first trans man on Drag Race? Oh, my gosh. It was like the craziest thing ever because I love drag and I always have loved drag but growing up I did not think I could ever be on drag race and I've been watching drag race since I was in like 
um, you know, eighth grade or like freshman year of high school. But I always just in my mind was like, no, nope, that's not in my fan. That doesn't work out for me because that's just not how life is. And then so just working my fucking ass off and building my connections and like focusing on my art. And then when I got that call, it was just so unreal to me. I was so excited. And I was just like, girl, if I can do this and be like a little open some doors for some bitches and like start crashing the system, as I like to say, okay. it's just, it was just so surreal. And I'm so excited for the future. How many times had you auditioned for Drag Race? That was my, that was my third time. Yeah, I auditioned for like, yeah, I think it was like nine, 11 or wait, nine, 11 and 13 or something. Like, I don't even know, random, random seasons. And what do you think it was that was like that final little ingredient that just made them go, oh, yes, absolutely. This is what we want. I mean, before I like my first two auditions, I was like, I identified as trans, but I had not taken any steps to transition at that point. And like looking back, it's like I hadn't found myself. I wasn't like as comfortable with who I was, my story. I was still like trying to figure it out. So I feel like I definitely gave that off in my boy interview. And then in my last tape, I was just like, so me, like, this is the tea, get into it or get lost. Cause that's what you're getting period. And I think that's probably what it was a thousand percent and just found myself and was like, get into it or get lost, bitch. I think that's, that's the key to being successful. Yeah. What'd you say, Tran? How many, uh, how many times did you audition? One. You, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, one. And I've had to go back three times. <laughs> 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 so my whole thing, and this ties into the whole work and girl theme and all that, is that you're never going to be successful until you're authentic. Yeah. And I feel like um, a lot, especially now knowing people on the production side and in casting, you know, it, you, I always ask them like, what do you look for? And they always look for real people. Yeah. And I think that the biggest mistake that a lot of girls make when they audition is that they're trying to be what they think drag race is. They're trying yeah. to give them yes, got, mm-hmm, this and this, and look how sassy I am. And that's not what it's about not because that. sass and, and attitude and one liners They'll only get you so far. Eventually, you've got to make a connection and you're never going to connect with anybody if you're not connecting with yourself. And so I fully understand what you're saying about like your third try was, okay, I'm finally just going to be me and and give them this. And if they want it, they want it. And they want it. And the whole world wants it. Yeah. And uh, that's what um, I was actually doing Gigi Gorgeous's podcast the other day. And someone asked, like they take questions and someone was like, how do you become famous? And I was like, the trick of literal life, like success in any way to me is authenticity and like focusing on your art or your judge or whatever it is. And then just telling your story and how you work to get there and how like what your art is unique to yourself because that's what's going to connect with people not like you said not trying to be what you think they want to see on drag race because we've seen it on drag race baby we're done <laughs> moving on exactly yeah. we're looking for season two yeah two. <laughs> a reboot yeah <laughs> um so we both ginger and i have done all stars would you ever go back for an all stars oh my gosh well i feel like my answer to that changes every day but i think like Yes, because I I truly loved Drag Race. Like, I loved being there every second. Towards the end, I think I said in my Tic Tac lunch with Rue, I was like, I'm moving in to the, tic- like, behind the fabric.com wall, bitch. Like, <laughs> I, everyone was so excited to go home. And I was like, I want more episodes. Like, I was, I just have so much fun. It was just an excuse for me to turn looks and just explore myself and my artistry. And so I feel like if I went back on All Stars, it would just be like, Girl, the looks I would bring, I just can't. I love an excuse for a look, so. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give you some advice going back. If, when you go back, when they send you the letter and they're like, you can only bring five suitcases at 50 pounds each, bitch, fuck that. You go take <laughs> everything that you need to take and worry about it later because they will, if they want you on there, they will, what, what are they gonna do? Your stuff's there already. I it's know. There. Actually, yeah, no, when I went on Drag Race, we had the bag limit or whatever, and I got those like, 
containers or whatever you get and I got like the biggest ones ever though that was like way over even though but they like all weighed the correct weight but they were like you're not don't even worry about the weight they don't even weigh that shit they didn't weigh that shit they were they were they weighed mine in uh my driveway they were full like pulled out a fucking scale I was like are you kidding (laughs) And I had like my leaf blower from one of the runways. I like taped it to my makeup bag and it didn't count as a bag. And I was like, hmm, it's just to carry on. <laughs> See, now I wish that I would have gotten the advice to take more bags to All Stars. Because, girl, people are reading me for wearing those fucking boots. <laughs> I was like, I have no more space. This is oh, it. My God, bitch. I, I feel like if I went back, I would definitely go off. And then my the like runway themes would be like a suggestion of what I wanted to wear. <laughs> Like fully. I'm like, well, that's a gorgeous theme, but I'm really a dying to wear this dress. <laughs> yeah. There's there's t- stuff that I brought to All Stars 4 that I I didn't get to wear because um there was nothing I could wear it for. Or or the, uh, there was stuff that I brought that I just wore for random shit just just to wear it. I would love to see those dresses that you just brought for fun because you're like, your artistry is so intricate. Like what are these crazy pageantry, stunning, fully rhinestone gowns that you just didn't have a chance to wear? <laughs> you know, I don't really wear anything like pageantry anymore. I'm like, I, I've like retired the pageant dress unless like I have to. Right. Um, unless yeah. I have to wear a gorgeous gown. Unless I'm forced to wear a fully encrusted gown. I just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now it's all about like, like for for All Stars Four, we had to do a, an after dark evening wear, which was just like basically a gown, and mine was the red one, and it was literally just cut out everywhere. Like it wasn't even a pageant dress. It was like I was naked with a strip of fabric. Yeah, I love that for you too. I mean, bitch, with your body, I'd be naked every second too. I mean, I guess yeah. I am every second. You are so. naked every. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> That's funny. So you, before Drag Race, you were a amazing makeup artist that's traveled and done so many like amazing uh, uh, projects and worked on with so many celebrities. Who is like your favorite celebrity you've worked with? Um, I think my favorite ever is, I really love just working with Heidi Klum because she makes it so fun. Like every day, I'd be like sad when the job was over. We did a full season of her show and I had to be there every day for like the longest set days ever. It's like a full drag race show basically. And it was just, I was like sad. I wanted more. Cause she, I would literally draw her eyes so big that there was no room for an eyebrow. And she'd look in the monitor and she'd be like, I need more. And I'd be like, where? Like, where do you put more? Well, she's such a fan of drag too. Like she, she loves it. Loves it. She's, she's so funny. She's literally just everything. Now, where did they film that at? Um, we filmed it like right outside of LA and it was so cool. Isn't, because isn't that a, That's like a, 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 not, it's not even a, a, it's in a different country. Yeah, no, it's fully, we filmed it all in LA, but like the whole crew was like flown in from Germany, as well as like Pablo Vitar, like everyone just flown in because Heidi loves LA. <laughs> hey, why? if I got to the level of Heidi Klum, even if I was filming something that took place in, in Greece, but, uh, no, we're going to do it in Orlando because I like my house. My bad. I love my yeah. dog. <laughs> exactly. I wonder if they're yeah, gonna no. do a, another season of that. Oh, I I need another season. I thought it was, I was actually like booked to do the like another season, but I think like COVID came around. I think it was around that time, and I haven't heard since. So well, I, you should move to Florida it. because apparently COVID never existed in Florida. Bitch, I just performed in Florida. And trust me, I was like, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was gagged. Well, like, no, it was like three weeks into the pandemic and Disney was like, no COVID here. Everybody come on. But like everyone's kind of like the numbers are kind of like the same as everywhere else. It's like maybe you guys are onto something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's because in Florida we run around barefoot most oh. of our lives. So we've stepped on needles and nails and, and gotten every kind of infection you could probably get. Yeah, so, so we put it in virus like now. Yeah, I can't penetrate the calluses of that, Florida. That part. Yeah. That part. There is nothing on me that cannot be penetrated. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Trinitrated. Tri- oh. Oh. 
know. Under single. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, uh, I need to have that trademark. <laughs> So I, I wanted to ask you, so when on season seven, I was the first plus size contestant to make it into the top three first plus size contestant that was really a contender for the crown. And I felt a lot of pressure from um, the plus size community to represent. And I mean, and that's that's such a it's an honor and it's also very daunting. So I wanted to ask you, like, what was your experience representing for the trans community, particularly the mask trans community. Yeah, I mean, going into the show, I was so scared of saying the right thing, doing the right thing, looking the right way, just everything. And then I was actually thinking, I was talking to like RuPaul about it and he was just like, you just have to be yourself. And that's what people are gonna connect with is just hearing your story. You don't always have to say the right thing and be the right, exactly the right thing because you just, you're here. He said exactly, what did he say? He was like, you already got the job and now you just gotta show up. Yeah. And I was like, it's just the best advice I ever heard. And it took like weights off my shoulders because from that point on, I just was like down to talk about my life and my story. And I, I almost didn't feel like a pressure in the finale to even like win anymore. Cause I was just like, I'm here. I made it to the end. Like I'm telling my story on this platform and I was just so proud of what I did. And so I was just, I felt like I was, representing the community in like the best way possible. So it was everything. I love yeah, that. I feel like- it, it feels like, um, like when I was on the show, I, it, it's a lot of the, the I was thinking the same way as you is like, when I went in, I felt the pressure and I felt like, okay, I'm here for this purpose and I'm here to represent and I'm here to make life better for all of the people that are like me. And then halfway through the competition, it, I just felt like I was gonna crack under that pressure. And it suddenly became about, okay, the best way to represent is by just being myself and doing what I do. And that's when I started to really find the success. And, and, and it's, it's crazy how the world can kind of put all of this pressure on people to represent one thing or another. And eventually you just have to find your way through it and realize that the best way to represent is by just being honest and authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Representation, no matter what, what you're representing is, is, is super important. You know, just, just you, like you said, just you being yourself is, is representation enough is, is advocating enough because you, you're you, you know, and there's other people that are just like you or have very similar stories as you that, that are, are watching you. And that's all you really have to do. But like how, so you, you, your season is like recent. How have you like, I'm, you've gotten a ton of praise, but I know that there's probably a lot of haters out there. How have you dealt with like cancel culture or like the haters with like, like you said, with saying the right thing or not saying the right thing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like most of my hate uh, it comes from just people not understanding it and thinking drag is this one thing and not being educated on, first of all, the art of drag as well as trans issues just it comes from a place of like ignorance I guess and so I just read those comments and I'm just kind of like George you'll learn it'll be fine just keep watching because we're breaking down the boundaries and every every season I feel like there's more and more representation from so many different parts of the community and so I'm really excited to keep watching that grow and keep watching those haters be confused (laughs) (laughs) eventually So many, uh, uh, Drag Race is starting to open the doors for so many more types of drag than what they had even like a year or two ago. And like, we have uh, Kylie who's had, you know, uh, physical transformation. Um, We have a a cisgendered uh, female now on uh, uh, Drag Race UK that's coming out. We have um, also Drag Race UK, uh, a drag artist that does like monster drag. So I love seeing so many di- different types of drag uh, now being represented uh, for Drag Race. It's just so great. It's so fun. Cause that's what drag is. When you actually like are a fan of drag and you go to the bars, like you don't just see, it's not just cisgender men putting on wigs yeah. anymore. Well, <laughs> like, my favorite drag, and I've said this for years, my favorite drag to watch is, is our AFAB queens. You know, we called them, bio queens 15 years ago when I started, 
or or the divas or the femme queens or whatever. But I just love somebody who is already hyper feminine, really exaggerating that femininity. Yes. I like it to me. It just, it turns it for me. And I am so excited for UK season three. Okay. Just because of Victoria Scott. I'm like, I, I'm obsessed already. I'm so excited to see her kill it too. It's going to be uh-huh. everything. Whether she kills it or flops or whatever, I don't give a shit. I'm just so excited to see it. Yeah. Well, you're across, bitch. <laughs> right? All right. So we do play a game with all of our guests on here. It's like two truths and a lie, but it is with um, pornographic motion picture titles. So okay. I'm going to give you three porn titles and then you and Trinity are going to decide which one is fake out of it. All right. Hopefully I've just seen them all already. <laughs> <laughs> Start in several, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a gig. We're working girls. Okay. All right. Uh, our first one is the devil wears nada. Real. <laughs> Number two is anus stasia. What? Like Anastasia, <laughs> Anastasia. Wow. Not from Beverly Hills. Uh, and Jurassic Pork. Not that. I. <laughs> if Anastasia is real, I need to see. But I also <laughs> feel like it could be real because it might be some. It's giving me very like Russia vibes. Like <laughs> something getting shoved up her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like, have you seen that one um, basketball butts where she shoves like eight mini basketballs up her ass? I have no. not. <laughs> you have to see it. We'll I'm put the like, link for all of our subscribers. <laughs> yeah, she shoves like eight mini like Nerf basketballs, eight like up her ass oh and then parts them out. <laughs> it's everything <laughs> you're gonna touch. So I feel like Anastasia is giving me that vibe. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Jurassic Pork isn't real. Trinity? I'm going to say Asia. Trinity, you have just broken your loser streak. You are right. No! The yes! fake title is Anastasia. So that means there are real pornographic motion pictures called The Devil Wears Nada and Jurassic Pork. I will expect everyone who's listening to do the research and report back on how wonderful those are. I saw this like one that was like a, you know, those like T-Rex suits, like the inflatable one. Uh-huh. It was a porn with that. Like he was wearing that. It does not. So I <laughs> that's what Jurassic Pork is. <laughs> What'd you say? It's just old ladies in, in those little Tyrannosaurus Rex suits. No. Oh, my no. God. Trinity, oh, you do not get to act offended by that. We all saw your lip sync on All Stars and that old lady suit. <laughs> Hey, I wasn't having sex on camp. Not that I'm a, a bit, I, I love porn. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> so I, so Trinity's first, Trinity's first porn that she ever saw was Willy Wanker and the Fudge Factory. Wait, Mine was Sumo Sue and the Fat Ladies of Wrestling. What was yours? Wait, are you guys lying? That's really. No, those are real. What the fuck? What are you Googling? That's your first. Go- this was on a VHS tape. VHS, VHS back in the day. My oh my brother, God. my oldest brother was watching it on our TV VCR combo and it got stuck. And so <laughs> I, I was going in to watch like one of my regular old Disney videos, bitch, and I pressed play and there's Sumo Sue and the Fat Ladies of Wrestling. Oh my God, I'm dead. Wow, that's I, I feel like the first one I ever saw was like, it was like, lollipop twinks or something and they would hold actual lollipops i swear to god (laughs) it was like twinks that would hold like lollipops and get fucked i swear i don't know why just that's like my earliest porn memory and i i sometimes like try to find it and i'm like because it's like so funny to talk about and me and my friends love sending each other like the craziest porn we can find like that are crazy like basketball butts and (laughs) And yeah, that was a definitely weird one. They, it was like those giant lollipops and stuff and like the little ones. And it was so weird. I love that. I know. It, was, it, felt like, it felt like relatable to me. Such a journey. I know. To becoming the lollipop twig. Exactly. And then eventually you'll be in a community theater production of The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a long trajectory. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, where can all of our listeners find you? Not that they haven't already. Oh, well, you can find me on Gottmik on everything. Made it easy for you. I love that. I know. I'm, just go to gingerminch.com to find me. I'm at Trinity the Tuck to find me. And that's yeah. it. And then find yourself. Because yeah. that's what life is about. It's about finding yourself. Or Googling <laughs> Or, or go find uh, the uh, the lollipop porn. That, yeah, that's what... yeah, send it to me. I need to find it. Or uh, yes. just go fuck yourself <laughs> with a lollipop. <laughs> Who knows? Life is need... possibilities when you're a working I need girl. To all these porns. I want to see them all. <laughs> oh you have God. to. We'll have well, a viewing I'm party so one day. Does and I'm gonna send you guys the basketball butts. You're gonna die. I will watch it. I will watch it. For being our guest today on Working Girls, we appreciate you coming by. Duh, thanks for having me. This was everything so far. We love you so much. And I'm so thrilled that the world gets to see how incredible you really are now. Um, thanks. I love you guys so much. Congrats on winning. Thank you. you. Yeah. I'm losing. <laughs> 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 we'll just, we'll, we'll go with the congrats on winning. No matter yeah. what. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're, we're still praying. We're still praying. I have on my uh, uh, Team Ginge panties right now, so... That's so oh. weird that you just like watch the finale and you're just like, oh, there he is. Like, Isn't that weird? So weird. Like the crowning, like while you're there. Yeah. Well, when well, like. Well, they, <laughs> crowning. well, that was true. Yours was a full surprise. Yeah, maybe you'll yeah. all get crowned four ways this time. Hey, I don't care. As long as the check clears, I'll share it with all 12 of those other bitches. That's all I'm saying. Wait, did you guys have to share the check? No, no, we did. We got our own money. Yeah, me and Monet were both like afterwards, like we wish they would have just picked one of us. But honestly, it's been so great since like we really haven't crossed paths through our reign afterwards. It's been really then, great since I haven't seen her at all. So everything's working out. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. We didn't really cross paths at all. Um, it was not till like drag cons and some other stuff. Um, I'm going to. Um, I have both of my vaccinations. I'm going to uh, Puerto Vallarta, which is the first time I, I got canceled over uh, quarantine because people thought I was in uh, Puerto Vallarta, but that was not me. I was not there. This is my first time going, um, but I'm going uh, and meeting Monet and Shay there. And I think Jada might join us too, just for a couple of days to get away. Well, depending on uh, if I win or not, maybe I'll join you as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll come to you. Let's just all go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's have a good time. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this enthralling edition of Working Girls. Uh, I am Ginger the Minge. The and second. I'm Trinity the Tuck. The third, Junior. And I'm Gonnick the Trans. <laughs> and we love you so much. And we'll, listen, we'll, we'll listen to you next time. We'll talk to you next time. You'll see. Just, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.